The Floor is Jelly is a 2D platformer where the floor is made of jelly. And so are the walls or ceilings, depending on how the platforms are laid out in any particular world. It's made by the solo developer Ian Schneider, who has this really cool website filled with quirky browser-based games, with The Floor is Jelly being the first title he published on Steam. But even though this title came through the Steam Greenlight project way back in 2014, and caught the eye of some big YouTube names like Marky Plyer and Jack Septikai, it's a game that never really took off, and at the time of writing this review, around five years after its release, The Floor is Jelly has just 250 user reviews on Steam, which, going by the conventional wisdom, suggests around 8 to 20,000 copies sold, but many of those, like me, probably bought the game for the grand price of just 69 pennies. In The Floor is Jelly, you enter levels by dropping through floating windows and progress by jumping through the next one. At certain stages, you find elevator doors that remind me of the TARDIS from Doctor Who, and moving through these marks a greater leap forward in the game. The Floor is Jelly has interesting little quirks, where you exploit the jelly-like nature of the environment to move around. When you jump, the floor acts like a trampoline to gain you more height. Bouncing yourself into a wall gives it just enough flex for you to climb up flat surfaces, and you can pass under some deadly obstacles by bouncing the jelly floor down underneath them. It's a really neat twist on traditional 2D platformers and a lot of fun to mess around with. There's this odd sounding term that devs and critics sometimes mention when talking about platformers called Game Feel, which always makes me think of Charles Boyle's email blast. In essence, what it means is how good is a game when taken completely out of context? How much fun is it just to control the character and use the mechanics? A game like Super Mario Bros scores a 10 out of 10 in game feel. The character's movement is just so perfectly precise and punctuated by powerful poses as he purposefully pursues his princess. Even without knowing where you're going or why, it's fun to just bounce on mushrooms and break blocks. Usually in 2D platformers, exactness is key to game feel. You need to know exactly how high Mario jumps, exactly how fast he runs, and you get given near pixel perfect control of his movement. As a result, you can traverse levels with great precision. The Floor is Jelly doesn't do this at all. Movement in The Floor is Jelly is at times almost uncontrollable. The acceleration on your running and jumping is really fast, and when you combine that with wobbling platforms, varying surface normals, and chaining several jumps together, it can become hard to precisely aim where you want to go. And it still works. It's not at all annoying for a few good reasons. One, because levels are kept short and sweet. Failing a level by dying just means immediately restarting that same room, so even if you are getting stuck on a few jumps, you can easily repeat it 5, 10, or if you're me, maybe even 20 times to get to the next door, and even then it still only takes a couple of minutes. Secondly, a lot of the platforming sections don't have any threats in them, so you don't need total control to manage all the jumps. And lastly, not every level is focused entirely on platforming, there are fun little puzzle elements thrown in too. So, what makes The Floor is Jelly good? To start, it is absolutely gorgeous. The platforms are single colour blocks that stand out easily from the gradient backgrounds. Vibrant trees and flowers coat the platforms to give levels more colour and turn them from abstract shapes into features of a living environment. The Floor is Jelly boasts a variety of worlds, and each area in the game has its own distinct colour scheme and theming. The Ghost has a minimal design that changes colour to fit the level's tone, and has just enough personification from its pointy legs and walking animations to feel like a real character. On top of this, the game has an exceptional soundtrack, written by the fantastic composer Richard Vreeland, aka Disasterpiece. Better known now for his work on the STD-turned-monster horror movie It Follows. Genuinely, that's what the film is, it's worth a watch. Vreeland also later composed the critically acclaimed soundtrack to Hyperlight Drifter, which has been used in the background of video essays on YouTube ever since. So I've given you his references, but for further proof of the quality of The Floor is Jelly, let's listen to a few clips.
The music is top notch and the sound effects are too. Sound effects are incredibly important to games for player feedback and to build immersion. The echoes in the underground caves, the happy bloop every time you jump, the little elevator ding when you move through a TARDIS door. You can tell there was a lot of time and effort put into making all these noises immensely satisfying. The flowery bounce pads in one of the worlds are a perfect example of how to incorporate dynamic sound effects into a video game. If you've watched any of my videos before, you know how much I love dynamic soundtracks, but I also love... dynamic visual art? Adaptive graphics? I don't know if there is an exact term for this, though one of those two would fit, but walking across a small plant and watching it bloom into a majestic tree just adds to my interest in a game as an interactive medium. But more than that, it made me want to jump on every platform I could find, just to see the level sprung with new life. It's details like this that turn platforming levels into living worlds. In the caves, there were frogs hopping around and ribbiting in the background. You can see fish swimming underwater, birds flying amongst the blowing leaves. None of these are necessary details, but they make the levels just that much better to be in. There's a great variety in the levels too. I mentioned before that some of the levels are all about dexterity, whereas others have a greater focus on solving little puzzles, and I think it's worth specifically looking at a few of the level types in The Floor is Jelly. It starts with the happy opening levels to the game, with abundant plants and a bright sunset which have nothing but basic platforming to get you used to the jelly environment. This moves on to the moody, echoey caves which act as a hub for many of the early stages. There's the world which introduces water that you can dive into and explode out of to gain height. When you're in the water, the game's physics flips so you jump downward and fall upward, which messes with you just enough to make these probably the trickiest platforming sections. There's the rain world with the bird statues and rotating platforms, which is the most puzzle-focused area of the game. In some levels, you have to land on each platform in the correct order to open these flowers like a passcode. Others involve rotating platforms so that white flowers can always get sunlight and that the cat plant things are always covered from the rain. The white snow world with its platform switching, phase shifting puzzles is probably my favourite part of the floor is jelly. Every time you touch a new surface, that one becomes tangible and the others revert to dotted lines. But if you keep in contact with a surface by walking across it or sliding down a wall, then you can pass through the dotted lines without activating a different platform. So you move in and out of the various platforms and try to find a way into the same surface as the window. Most levels in the floor is jelly were either puzzle solving or skilled platforming, but these snow worlds are a great combination of the two. I would happily play a full game of puzzles with an expanded version of this concept. The next one that I'm going to mention is the final section of the game, so if you want to play through without spoilers, then click to the time shown on the screen. From user reviews I've seen, this is the most controversial part of The Floor is Jelly. If any part of a game with fewer than 300 Steam reviews can really be considered controversial. What happens is that following on from an ominous dark section, glitches have started to spread and the very fabric of the world is breaking down around you. The core physics of The Floor is Jelly start changing. Slowly at first, with the jelly becoming tougher, then wobblier, then almost plastic, throwing off all the instincts you've developed from past levels. It feels wrong, it's almost unsettling. The breakdown becomes more rapid right towards the end, and you can see that everything is really starting to fall apart as the environment gets worse and worse. Many sections now feel like a race against the clock to find the window before the world has devolved into a broken mess. It's a build-up of tension, and the game transcends into sheer chaos, and then stops. The floor isn't jelly, it's just... floor. The glitch runs amok and then calm, peaceful. You burst the trees, you pop the platform, and the game transforms back into the bubbling of colours that it started with. I've seen it said that this final section is awkwardly difficult to play and even hard to look at, which I can't disagree with, it is both of those things. But as a finale to a 1.5 hour long game, the breakdown of the rules, the period of chaos, it felt like a fitting crescendo as you panic through the very end in the only way the game has taught you, keep jumping through the doors. I thought it worked as an ending, but maybe I'm wrong. It also glitched out in a very minor way every time I finished the game and the credits didn't roll. If you're an achievement hunter, just close the game, reopen it, play through the final 15 seconds again and the achievement should activate the second time. 
I do have a couple of negatives. I mention this for quite a lot of indie games and it's more informational than it is a criticism, but the scope of the game. The floor is jelly is short. If you don't go achievement hunting, looking for all the secret windows and activating the computer terminals within, then the game lasts about one and a half to two hours. The frantic and sometimes imprecise platforming might not be for you. You are guaranteed to mess up a few jumps seemingly out of nowhere, which isn't great, though you will never lose any significant progress because of it. There are also a few odd difficulty spikes in some places. Most levels are fine. You'll breeze through them enjoying the bounces, admiring the backgrounds and listening to the gorgeous soundtrack. And then out of nowhere you'll get stuck for a bit because it's awkward to hit five consecutive bounce pads with a ceiling over them. Though, as I said before, because of how quickly you restart and the short levels, this getting stuck only lasted 30 seconds. The longest any one level took in the game was 1 minute and 40 seconds, which was because it had one tricky jump at the end of the level and it took me a few attempts to get it right. If you skip the section that I marked as a spoiler, I'll also quickly repeat that it's possible that you might find the last 7 or 8 minutes of the game a little bit frustrating to play. I also had a few bugs while I was playing. I couldn't recreate many of these, but a few times after moving through a door, an asset model would disappear. So one time my character vanished. It was still there on the screen and I could see the jelly platforms reacting to my jumps, but the actual character wasn't visible. Late on in the game, a spiky purple death jelly turned invisible, but it could still kill me. Closing the game and reopening fixes this if it ever happens to you, and you won't lose any progress either. There's also the bug I mentioned before about the game's completion achievement and credits not activating the first time you finish, but again, closing the game and reopening it will solve the problem. I love this game. I've played through it three or four times now and I think it is a real gem. I absolutely recommend playing The Floor is Jelly, especially if you love art games and platformers. You can always add it to your wishlist and see if there's another 90% off sale sometime in the future. It is a short game with a narrow scope, but what it does do, it does really well. The jelly environment is a brilliantly whimsical idea and the gorgeous minimalist art design paired with the excellent soundtrack make The Floor is Jelly a delight to play.